Hi everyone, my name is Brandon. I'm the owner of a business called Strat Internal Performance. I'm a personal trainer, a fitness educator, and I'm a passionate drummer. And one of the things I love talking about is I love talking to people like you about how you can modify your drum set experience to have no pain and prevent back pain in the future. Now, talking about drum thrones, drum thrones have been a very popular conversation on this channel. What should you sit on? When should you sit on it? How long should you sit on it? And how can you modify your position to make sure you have a pain-free experience? And there are definitely other videos on this channel, but today, in 2020, I wanna talk about which drum throne should you purchase to help your back? It's a great conversation. Drum thrones are really the centerpiece. They are the anchoring point in which our vessel enters into the drum set outside of the drumsticks and the drums. We need to have a good, solid foundation of a sturdy, healthy, appropriate seat for us to sit on. Unfortunately, one of the biggest challenges we have in the drum music industry is many drummers who are fantastic and popular musicians will advocate for certain products and specific pieces of hardware that may not necessarily be appropriate for you. There's the post hoc ergo propter hoc where one drummer sits on one drum throne from one company and there's some sponsorship and this unique magical throne helps their back pain and they tell everyone through social media and then all of a sudden this product becomes a panacea. The real problem is there are no panacea products. I hope that if you're observing this channel as a drummer and you look at some of my other fitness related content, you'll see that there are no magic thrones. There are no magic products. There is only physics and the human body Body, the physiology that we're made up. And if you understand a little bit of the physics, even the basic Newtonian three laws, and some anatomy and how the forces interact on our structures, you can in instantly create a critical thought process to look at these things yourself. That's one of the things I'm hoping I can do with this channel, is educate people like you, drummers, musicians, personal trainers who are into music, even if that, you can learn as much about the body as you possibly can to make your own critical decision. So, enough of that dialogue. Let's talk about which drum throne should you choose. Now, when coming to a drum throne choice, it's actually much more simple than you might think. The same conversation applies to shoes and other supportive hardware that we purchase for our day to day, even office ergonomics. My favorite drum throne, and don't be underwhelmed, is a flat, simple drum throne just like this one. This one is the Pearl Roadster, and it's just flat and round and traditional. Generally speaking, in my experience, there are three drum thrones that are the points of conversation. There are the round, flat ones like this, and there are some square ones, so a flat, normal surface. There are motorcycle bucket seat styles that are a little more triangle shaped that accommodate your leg shape. And then the third is, I believe, the Carmichael or any drum throne that has a split in the middle to help with your back. First and foremost, we'll talk about the first two and then at the end of the video, we'll apply a little bit of physics and I'll tell you exactly why I am not a fan of the Carmichael throne and I really do not recommend you purchase that product for your back health. First and foremost, flat drum thrones and the bucket seat both have merit, both have a little bit of both of them have their own merit, but I'll tell you why I lean towards the flat drum throne. First and foremost, you have this back system here. You have your sacrum and your lumbar spine and how your sacrum, the triangle bone, meets the two innominates, the iliac crest, which creates your pelvis. These bones, over years and years and years, we've evolved sitting and sitting on flat surfaces. The weird part about being a drummer and sitting on a flat surface is that it's not about the flat surface we're sitting on, it's actually the reaching forward and the moving of our appendages when we're playing drums that actually bothers our back a little bit more. Personally, my bias from the education I have is I would much rather have a flat surface that makes no forced changes and puts no weird forces into my body to allow my back and my body to adjust and adjust to the even flat terrain, much like it were on the ground. Now a close second for me, which I don't have any of, is the bucket seat. So the bucket seat has a bit of a crotch pad and then it'll kind of swoop down and it'll allow your legs to sit in the grooves. One of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of this one personally is not because of the shape of the pad, unlike the Carmichael throne that we'll get to in a second. I'm not a big fan of it because when you're sitting on it, if I have a traditional throne like so, I can adjust my height of how high I'm sitting very easily by swiveling the throne and checking my active range of motion. The 
thrown with the drop in it, anything that has a dent in it, you're gonna have to adjust the height of the throne a little bit differently, which is fine, especially if you're gonna be at home, but if you're someone who's switching from drum sets often, like for me, I have three different drum sets I'm switching from, and then if I go to practice at somebody's house, I like a flat, simple throne because that way, what I can do is I can just take a drumstick, put it right at the side of the throne down to the ground and measure, okay, outside of the 16 inch length of this drumstick, how much higher is it? Four fingers, great, and I can adjust it very easily. Anything that's got a big drop in it makes it a little less optimal for adjusting for when you're on the go. However, it can be very, very comfortable. So on the Carmichael throne or any throne that has a slit in it to accommodate for back pain, first and foremost, you have to understand that when you're talking about back pain, the number of structures and tissues in the back that could be causing your back pain, there are dozens, maybe more, and it's really, really hard to predict the source of your back pain. So when you have someone that says, I created a product and this product will help to resolve your back pain, outside of the fitness industry, 99% of the time it is a ploy Homer Simpson once fell over a garbage can and resolved his back pain and told all of his neighbors, and in the episode it worked pretty well, and that's called post hoc ergo propter hoc, right? You do something, there is a reaction, and because you did the thing and there was a reaction, you correlate that every time you do the thing, you're gonna get the same reaction. It's just like if someone were to slap you in the arm and all of a sudden your toenail fell off, you go, wow, every time slaps me, someone slaps me on the arm, my toenail is gonna fall off. That's not necessarily true. And that's the same with these, is when people feel new stimulus, the body responds. And the body's pretty brilliant. So when there's new stimulus, sometimes it'll respond in a way that's favorable, sometimes not. The Carmichael throne is an interesting idea. Any throne that puts a slit in the middle, the idea that they're trying is that they're trying to suggest that when you place your two sit bones on top of these, and pardon me if this is a little wobbly, when you place your two sit bones on top of this, that these blocks will slightly separate and relieve some of the pressure in the lower back. Now, to be fair, if you have uh, exceptionally large sacrum, like a coccyx, the long bone at the very tip here, if you have anything sitting down, if you have, uh, frankly, any obstructions in the glutes that are painful to sit on, having a slit in the middle, as well as for other reasons, could be very, very helpful for comfort. But one of the problems that pops up with this idea for me is the idea is when we start getting into Newtonian's three laws. The third law in Newtonian physics is the equal and opposite reaction. So what that describes is that whenever I push into something, if I push down with my finger into this pad with 10 pounds, this pad is gonna push back up into me with 10 pounds makes sense. If I take the same skeletal system and I place it back up on the blocks, it might make sense that from the bottom that these two blocks are gonna separate and relieve some pressure potentially down at the sacroiliac joint. Now, number one, the sacroiliac joint has very, very little joint play. Pretty much if you were to smash your two hands together and the skin movement you get between, that's how much motion you're getting here. So it's not as wobbly as my model looks, which already starts to create a bit of a problem. Second, when, if this model were sturdy, there we go, if I'm pushing down, and say you have an average male that weighs about 180 pounds in this scenario, or female, let's just say it's 150 pounds. You have 150 pounds, you don't have the entire weight because some of the weight's in the legs, so maybe we have 100 pounds going down into these two blue blocks. That means that each one of these blocks will be taking 50 pounds. Now, because the block is separated, because the Carmichael throne is separated, you're not gonna get just the forces down, you're gonna get the forces out. So that also means that as you're going, you're pushing down, these, these cushions are absorbing your body weight downward and they're also starting to separate. If you're a heavier person or the fabric of the material is not dense enough, it's gonna actually start to separate more and more and more. The problem with that is that because you have a closed system like your body is that as these blocks start to separate, it's gonna actually start to push inward at the top. So what you're gonna have, which gets a little bit awkward, is you have separating at the bottom, which is what the product is intended to do, potentially enough to receive relief pain, maybe not, and then you have these forces are gonna start doubling back and pushing back up into the top. What does this mean? Frankly, having a giant slit in the middle of the pelvis is gonna create some space for organs that may not necessarily wanna be squished, but you're gonna have physics that will push out, separate the bottom a little bit if you're even strong enough to produce forces to separate that enough to relieve pain, but then it's gonna start pushing back up into the top. 
because this bone and anywhere you have a surface like this, once you start creating motion, the body operates in a very rotary fashion. So when I start trying to separate this in this joint, the sacroiliac joint, just talking about this one, we're gonna have some contact surfaces that will bump into one another. And because you have those surfaces near the top touching, you create a fulcrum and then a joint axis and then motion in the opposite direction, which means then potentially you're doing more harm than good. So frankly, one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of thrones like the one with the blue blocks or Carmichael thrones is frankly, one, you scientifically cannot prove that it's actually gonna relieve pain. All of the pain relieving effects that people are talking about are subjective. An individual sits on it, they go, wow, this feels great. And then fortunately with social media, if you have a drummer that experiences some relief, who's super popular and they have 100,000 followers on Instagram and they tell everyone, even if 1% follows, we have a big problem. Uh, second, frankly, product companies are gonna continue to try and create products to help resolve problems to make money. And it's a brilliant business idea. But at the end of the day, your body is absolutely the winner here. So what should you do? One, I would absolutely suggest getting a flat top throne. Unless you have some organs that you need to have that space for, have something flat and sturdy because it's less likely to create any weird forces into your back. Two, make sure your drum throne height is adequate. I have my drum throne height from video from several years ago. You can go back and check that out and we'll be revisiting that same video soon. Make sure you're sitting at the same height. Three, talk to a professional. Go talk to your physician, find a chiropractor, a physiotherapist, or someone who specializes in back problems and talk to them. But in 99% of the scenarios, and almost 100%, buying a product that a non-healthcare professional created to solve a body ache problem is not a great idea. So it's one of the reasons why I'll always advocate for flat, good, old school thrones. In fact, maybe you've seen one of my other videos, one of the thrones I still use is the flat throne that I got from my 1992 Pearl Export slash mahogany slash popular edition drum set. So. Let me know what you think, guys. If you disagree with me, totally fine. All right, everybody, so thank you so much for watching this video. Please remember, at the end of the day, I am a man of science and opinion second, and I will try to share as much information with you as I possibly can based off of my current understanding, which does lead into my personal preferences. So I'll share my preferences and I will state, this is my opinion, and if you like it, that's fine, and if you don't like it, that's fine too. What's more important is at the end of the day, you find a throne or a device that allows you to do what you love, play drums. And just because I'm not a fan of Carmichael thrones or any of the thrones that advocate for resolving back pain, doesn't mean you can't be. So everyone, this is Brandon. I am from Strata Internal Performance in Newmarket, Ontario. You wanna check me out, you can find me at brandon.green.fitnesspro on Instagram. You can find me at brandongreen.drummechanics on Instagram, Strata Internal Performance. I've got a little, lot of different faces, but I'm hoping that I can share some great information with you to keep doing what you love. So thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, I do have a lot of other videos below about my fitness business as well as drums. Please check them out, I'd love to hear what you think.